Wow, did you just get groomed today? You look so pretty. We're matching. We're matching, Momo. Good morning. I am in such a fabulous mood today. I honestly just want to hang with you and enjoy the good vibes. I feel insanely puffy right now. I don't know what it is, but I have been waking up as if I went to bed and chugged a gallon of salt. Like I truly do not understand. Is he waking up? He's taking the longest morning nap. I'm like missing him. I'm ready to go in there. And... Is he waking up? Anyways, how are we doing? What's the sitch? I personally had an amazing weekend. I went on a boat yesterday. Something about getting on a boat and going in the water in Miami makes all the difference because there's really not a lot of nature here. It's kind of a gridlocked city. The structure of the city makes no sense. Like when you're driving, the traffic is a nightmare, but when you go on the water, it really just makes you forget all about that because it's a little piece of nature. And I did that yesterday. Oh, he's away. What is that? I only got a crab or something. That's so cute. After a weekend, there's always like 50 pairs of shoes piled up by the door. Can my Depop stuff come in? No. Nothing from Depop? Shout out Henny's mom. This is so cute. There's a couple small changes that I've been meaning to fundamentally change around the house and I always, that like everything goes out the window on the weekends, but shoes by the front door, if you just get in the habit of never doing it, it always stay clean, but the, the second you put one pair of shoes there, shit hits the fan. Another thing, this entryway table, I said it, I'm like, this has to be a gorgeous entryway table, and this cannot be a place where everything gets thrown, like it's not a catch-all. But this weekend, again, I think like one thing went on the entryway table, and then this is what it opens the door to. But it's a new week, it is Monday, and the order will be restored. This boy is so big. He was just born one second ago. And he already takes up like half of my body. I can't believe it. My set is from Boys Lie. I'm actually friends with the owner, Tori, of Boys Lie. She's very fabulous. And Tori, if you're watching this, what if we did a little... 12330 X boys lie. Like, doesn't that have to happen? I feel like everybody loves 12330 and everybody loves boys lie. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video. Audible has an amazing selection of podcasts, of audiobooks, and I'm the type of person I need to have something playing in the background while I do my tasks, while I go on my hot girl walks, while I do what I do. Like, I would rather have something to listen to while I get things done than to have something to watch on TV. Does that make sense? As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog. So check out Audible if you haven't already. You can get a free trial with audible.com slash Lauren Geraldo. And thank you Audible for sponsoring that portion of the video. So obviously now that I'm a mother, I'm on mom talk and I have like this mom algorithm and I used to make fun of my mom for having such a mom algorithm. I'm like, your Instagram feed is so for a mother. <laughs> but um, and now I get all that mom shit too. And I remember seeing this post about, oh, it takes, it can take a woman up to two years after she has her baby to get her sparkle back. And I remember seeing that post and being like, sparkle? Her sparkle back, like I, you know, I think I thought it was like cringy mom stuff, tbh. But then you become a mom and you start, like things start making sense, and you're like, all right, I get it, understood. Anyways, I feel like I am getting my sparkle back. Actually, I feel like I have my sparkle back at like seventy percent, like it's seventy percent back, and that sounds really corny unless you've had a kid and you're like okay i get what sparkle means it's sparkle i'm getting my sparkle back no, but like seriously i actually i'm getting it back bitch i feel great i did a podcast this 
week and they sent me the questions ahead of time. And you know what? I feel like their questions kind of ate. So what if I reuse their questions and answer them here? Because honestly, when I was reading it, I'm like, wait, these are fabulous questions. And I feel like this is what the people want to know. My girly swirlies would like the answers to these. So let me do that. I'm going to do a little GRWM, but to do nothing and to go nowhere. But just so I don't scare myself back when I watch this footage. Oh, truly. Like I've been popping off on Instagram. I will give myself that. I've been slaying it up, serving it up, banger after banger. And I feel... I'm gonna feel like a catfish if I proceed to film this video in this condition because the Instagram and the YouTube right now, there's a misalignment. But I honestly live for that. Like I do live for that. I feel like I do look like my pictures IRL. Oh my God, have you ever, ever like got in your own head about if you are a catfish or not? I, I truly don't think I'm a catfish. Actually, I know I'm not a catfish because when I meet people, they're like, oh my God, you're so gorgeous in person, but you're short. <laughs> Everybody says I'm like, Way smaller. Ira, but yeah. Um, let me do like a little five minute moment. My baby hairs are kind of re-entering the child. Okay, I've been doing different things for my hairline and they've been working. This one's nice. This is living proof. And this is nice because it helps with hair thinning, but it's a serum so I can put it in my hair and my whole head doesn't get oily. Like I could just keep on rocking whatever hairdo I had going on before. I have some new skincare that I want to try too. Is today the day? Fab. Wait. It's like I have all this skincare and no moisturizer. I'm like, that's the one thing I need. Let's try this one. La Roche Posay. Ultra sensitive skin. 0% preservative. 0% fragrance. Gorgeous. I love that. I'm going to answer these recycled podcast questions um this is from a gymshark podcast that i did so when that one does come out i'll link it on my story and you can watch me actually talk about it with another human but till then i'm talking about it with you like it's my own podcast i want to do a podcast anyways you've mentioned before on your social media that you prioritize time alone with yourself even if it looks different than before what does that look like now compared to what it used to be that's probably the biggest change that happens after you have a kid is, I would say the biggest change, TBH, is I used to measure my time in a day or a week. Like, oh yeah, this is what I did today or this is what I'm doing this week. And when you become a mom, that is a luxury that you no longer have because you have to think about time on more of an hour by hour basis. Because I'm always thinking about, well, he has to eat every three hours, okay? Also, he needs naps every couple hours. Everything is just very hour by hour. So getting time alone with myself, it's important to prioritize it, and I do. But the biggest difference with getting time for myself now is instead of, like, when I was just no kid, it was like, I'm going to take the day to myself. Or I'm going to do some things today. I'm going to run some errands. And you can kind of go leave your house and not really have a time frame in mind and not think about the time and like take a couple hours to yourself. Whereas now it's very measured. That's the biggest difference. This Tower 28 concealer has excited me so much. Like I haven't got so excited over a makeup product in so long. It's literally just a concealer, but I blend it in like it's skincare. And I feel like every concealer claims to be that way. Like, oh, it's just like skincare blends right into your skincare, but none you can hit with just your finger and they blend in gorgeous with no lumps and clumps and crazy. This is good. I'll link it for you. I am in the shade. Take down, baby. Do you have any tips for anyone who might feel like their balance is off or that they are putting too much time into one thing and not taking care of themselves? Do I, or am I just gonna talk it in my eyes? What's the question? Any tips for anyone who might feel like their balance is off and they're putting too much energy into one thing and not taking care of themselves? For me, if I'm not taking care of myself, then any other thing I do is gonna suffer the consequences and things are gonna be done either half-assed or they're gonna be done poorly. And there's, I mean, at one point you're gonna hit a wall. Like if you're truly doing one thing too much and not taking any time for yourself, I mean, the car can only keep going till it runs out of gas. So I truly do see time by myself 
as an investment to my future self so I can show up and I can be present and I can be the best version of myself. For example, I just spent the past six days in a row being home, being mom mode activated, like being with my baby yesterday. I peaced out and went on the boat for four hours. And was there a little bit of mom guilt in that? Yeah, obviously. Like I'm thinking, damn, like he's at home with his dad and I'm not there on a Sunday. Like that sucks. Like what if he's thinking about me? What if he's missing me? But then I have to catch myself and be like, me taking this four hours and going on a boat is going to make me so happy throughout the rest of the week that I'm down. I'm down to take those four hours to myself and I can be the best version of myself because of that. So I don't, or I try to not see it as so much of a negative and let that guilt seep in and truly look at it as a positive because it is, it really is. How do you balance being a new mom and a new wife? It's funny because I don't know, like when, I feel like first of all, in my relationship, we had been feeling like we were married for so long. We did, we've been living together for so many years. I mean, this is not something that I recommend by any means, but we moved in together so fast after meeting each other. And it's funny too, because I never thought I would be the one to do that. And everything that I did in that moment really went against everything that I was taught at home. Like the number one lesson I was told growing up was don't shack up, like don't live with anybody before you're married to them, which I, I mean, I feel that, but times really have changed. Like, how are you supposed to know if you want to marry someone, if you can't live with them before like i think you actually need to be somebody's roommate before you commit your entire life to being their roommate like signed on a contract on paper like isn't that crazy like our parents used to just marry each other without knowing how they would be as roommates like that's nuts to me but we had been living together for so many years and we had been dating and like we were super i guess like serious for so many years, like the getting married part kind of doesn't feel much different at all. And I know people have different experiences. Like I know some people get married and they're like, oh, everything is just better now, easier, whatever. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the wedding and the getting married got overpowered by becoming parents because that will change your life. That is a shift. The marriage, like I don't even feel the difference truly because I'm like, Whoa we just became parents like that is what actually changes your day-to-day -day. but i will say i'm glad we're married uh because that gives me just thicker slab vibes having a kid like that's my kid that's my husband i like it that way to each their own like anybody could do whatever they want personally different things like work for different people but i guess the biggest difference would be like that's my husband, that's my child. Like it just makes sense, feels good. Everybody's on the same page. We are in this for life, baby. Ew, my makeup brush literally smells like fart. Wow, that's not, it is today the day I wash my makeup brushes, I could go years without washing them. Truly, like each eyeshadow look that I do has like 50 shades of other colors from all the previous times I've done my glam. It's kind of gross. Today's the day. Let's talk about body image post birth or body changes in general. How has your mindset, how has your mindset shifted after being pregnant and having a baby? I've really learned how to surrender when it comes to my body. I, I was like in the best shape of my life when I found out that I was pregnant because I was on wedding mode. I was like prepping to be snatched in my dress, and like that's very much where my head was at. And finding out that I was pregnant, I'm like, all right. The wedding prep, like that's not happening anymore, who cares? I mean, I still did, but I'm like, whatever. After seeing your body change so much, like truly being pregnant is insane because you start not seeing your toes in the shower, your boobs completely change. And you learn in that moment to not like, I don't know, to not care too much because you just really have to surrender. Like the changes that happen to your body while you're pregnant are so fast and so extreme that if you try to hold on to any sort of control, it's like a losing game. So after having a baby and after going through pregnancy, I learned that like whatever happens kind of happens. It's out of my control. I can control the things that I can control and I can live a happy life and I can live a healthy life because I want to be healthy because I want to be active because I want to be fit. And that's very much how I see things, but I feel a different freedom in my body that I didn't have 
before and I feel a different respect for my body too. Like my body just did that. So I don't know, I feel a lot better and a lot more comfortable in my skin after having a baby than I did before. And I feel like I did a lot of mental growing up with that process, if that makes any sense. And I just feel a lot wiser in that regard. And those were the podcast questions. That was fun. I want to do a podcast, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I should do one while I live in Miami because there's so many people that are in Miami that are cool. And there's so many people that are constantly visiting Miami that if I did do a podcast, I feel like here it would be a lot easier to get cool guests on. Whereas if I end up moving to Arizona eventually, like who's coming on my podcast in the middle of the desert like no one's really out there so i feel like it's kind of my time now or never what do you think i don't know <laughs> i've been on a bit of a healthier vibe during the daytime not healthy but just good stuff i'm eating steak with some rice and greens i have to get my nails done Ever since moving into this house, I've really been enjoying Miami. I have to say, I really moved into the cutest neighborhood, super wholesome, very family oriented vibes. And that's really what I was missing. I'm so social in Miami. It's actually crazy. I have not been this social in years. And. I'm grateful for that. I feel like when I was in Scottsdale, I wasn't that social because I didn't really know anybody. And when I pictured myself as a new mom, I pictured myself being way less social. Because you just think like, all right, having a baby, you must kind of lose your social life entirely. And I've been finding a bit of a balance and it's been really nice and it's, Something that I don't think I would have as accessible to me if I did live in Arizona. Like here, there's so many friends nearby that I could text and we can grab lunch. We can do quick things with the baby. I can see friends a lot easier. There's a lot more people that I know here and that's been really fun. I have some travel coming up. We have not gotten on a plane and gone on any type of trip since our wedding. So the last time we've gone anywhere was Colombia, and it was in May and since then we didn't do any type of baby moon we just stayed had the baby and have not gone anywhere we didn't do wait we didn't even do a honeymoon I just realized yeah we didn't do a honeymoon we didn't do a baby moon um, because of obvious reasons and the baby is almost six months old wow that's actually crazy I can't believe how fast the time is flying but the baby's almost six months old and we are getting ready to go. And we should be driving in Miami. It's scary. Whoa, Miami driving is so scary. I hate this. So we haven't gone on a family trip yet with the baby. I am a little bit more trying to take the baby places. And I try to convince Honey that it's good for us. Blah, blah, blah. And Henny gets nervous when we do things. How do I get over this bridge? Okay, driving here actually makes me really nervous. Like, this is not fun. I hate this. Ooh, that's something I miss about Scottsdale, bro. The driving around. Driving around Arizona is so peaceful and relaxing. And there's mountains and everything is well thought out. And I cannot say the same for here. Goodbye. This made me literally sad. Yesterday, the stroller flips. Like, he could either face me or he could either face out. And he's such a baby that obviously he always faces me. And yesterday, we flipped him to face out, thinking that he wouldn't be ready. And he loves it. And it's really sad, because I feel like I went from having a baby to having a big boy. And that's what, that's all, that all, that's all it is. Like, every day, he'll do more things that I'm not used to him doing, and I'm like, wait but you're a baby, but it's weird. But they grow up. Parenthood. It's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is kind of out of my usual routine. Usually, after the nighttime walk, we just go straight to bedtime. 
but I miscalculated today. It's too early. So I'm gonna see if he lets me take a shower. I'm trying to like not show his face in the video that much. And he keeps trying to find himself in the mirror. Hello, sure. I'm trying to figure out if I should wash my hair. <sighs> Cause I really style my hair these days like once a week. And then I try to cling on to that styling job all week. And get more out of my hairstyle. Do you think this could go for another day? If I put it up in braids or should I take tonight, wash this out and do a whole bunch of hair masks and hair oils and stuff for my hairline. My hairline's looking better, but it looks a little nuts. Like it, ugh, postpartum hair loss really uh, came through my neck. I wasn't really foreseeing that one. And now my baby hairs are growing back finally, but they're all at this like super short length. So sometimes it's just, ugh, I don't know what I should do. See this? This is all regrowth, so this is technically a good thing, but I have these awkward hairs sticking from everywhere. So I'm in a constant battle of should I put a bunch of product in it and leave it, or should I leave it just styled looking cute? Because when I have volume like this, it's a lot easier to hide the hairline because my hair is all crazy. I can make it big. I can throw it in a bunch of different directions and. You want a binky? You want a binky? What I really need is a haircut. That's what I really need. But I really, yeah, I don't have time to do shit. I'm, I'm confident that once he's one, life will get a little bit more back to normal in that regard. Like today I got a manicure, but I didn't work out obviously because that would, that would be too hard. Sometimes I feel like that. I got a cute little set. I've been going to the same girl over and over because I finally found a Miami manicure person that does a dainty, gorgeous nail that doesn't make my hand look like my nails look thick. So shout out Sophia at Sophia Nails. Oh wait, her name is, <laughs> Sophia's her daughter's name. What's her name? Nina. Love you, Nina. I'm gonna wash my hair. I'm gonna wash my hair. I think to hang on to this hairstyle would be not in my best interest. I'm gonna wash my hair. Let's see how long he lets me film. This is where I feel like a Miss Rachel dupe because I don't let him do any screen times, but I have to entertain him somehow or else he's looking at me like, hello. Hey! Uh-oh. Yeah, my wardrobe has not been inspiring me literally <laughs> at all. Like, I don't even... I don't know, I just, I'm not feeling capsule collection vibes. I'm not feeling my clothes represent how I feel on the inside vibes. I haven't been really connecting with my clothes. I didn't know how my stuff was gonna fit me like after the whole pregnancy. I ended up getting rid of a lot of stuff when I moved here from Arizona and I haven't redone my wardrobe with my new sizes. I have a different waist size now because I got my birth given hips, I was a 20 whatever and now I had to go up a size so none of my pants really fit also the vibes that they're giving are just tired for example Ugh, like this just feels like three eras ago these cargos these like everything everything in here I'm just not connecting with and I've been doing some solid depopping because as of recently the only two places that I've really gotten pieces that I've been liking enough to rewear have been this cool thrifting spot that i went to in miami but going places with the baby is a mish and it is an ordeal so i've been doing a little bit of depop i'll show you what i have in my cart but i went to the thrift spot recently and i was able to get i think i've shown you i got these two cavalli jeans which cavalli just has a way of fitting a woman's body that just rocks these are both fun prints so they're definitely not like boring pants and i like the leg of them i depopped an orange asymmetrical top from revolve to go with this i hope they look cute together and what else have i oh and i also got a meow i really hope i say that right meow woo meow meow oh god i feel like nobody actually knows how to say the name of that brand i got a corset from them everybody has one and i realized like why is every single corset that i own house of cb let's diversify 
and all my friends told me to size up on that. I guess it fits big. I don't know, I hope it fits. I got a small and not an extra small because I don't know, I feel like I might, I, sh I feel like I should have maybe gotten a medium. But since my boobs shrunk after having a baby, I feel like the small might actually fit. I have that on the way and I'm trying to revamp in here. I'll show you my Depop cart later. We'll do some skims for sleepy time. We still haven't done bath time. You're being so good. Do you like to watch me talk about clothes? Is this fun? Am I more fun than Miss Rachel? I saw a comment, honestly, and I'm like, wait, the way that that's about to be me, I hope not. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I got this comment about screen time, and this mom said that she did no screen time too, and then she finally caved in on a flight. And I feel like that is so possible. I'm really gonna try to do everything to not let that happen but we're going on our first family trip we haven't gone anywhere together as a unit and this is where if i'm being 100 percent honest with myself this is where i struggle when it comes to comparing myself to other moms on instagram because sometimes the way that it feels when i'm scrolling and i'm seeing these other moms that have babies basically the same age as mine is these moms are going places they're going on family trips they're going out and about. Like I follow this one mom and her baby has literally been to New York City, to basketball games, to Disney World. I follow just regular moms that I know from either growing up or just new moms that I've found and they go to the beach with their babies. They just do a lot more than I feel like we are doing as a couple. And it's hard because I compare myself to that and I'm like, telling Henny, like, we need to do more. And I know comparison, like, isn't the best. But, hey, it's okay. It's okay. Can we go to the other room? I'm gonna try to get to the other room. So yeah, if you are dealing with comparing yourself on Instagram, it's okay, I'm right here. Do you wanna play with my brush? Do you wanna play with my headband? Whoa! So if you're comparing yourself on Instagram to girls sometimes, as we all do, and you're comparing your outfits, or you're comparing your body, or you're comparing your friend group, whatever is making you compare yourself on Instagram, just know that it doesn't end. Because now here I am comparing myself to other girls on Instagram and their family vacations and how they could do so much. I just really feel like there's certain moms that could do so much. Like, how do you go on all these trips and do all these activities with your baby? Like, I'm jealous. I'm jealous and it's it looks so easy when they do it. And that's like my biggest thing that I'm with Henny all the time asking him, talking to him. I'm like... We need to start doing more, like more real life things. I get it. He's a little bit more scared when it comes to doing anything. So I'm the type where I'm like, let's go here. And then he's immediately thinking about like all the things that can go wrong. And it's a balance. Like it really is a balance. Both of us are opposite in that regard. I want to do more. He wants to do less, but it's getting to the point where like he wants to do nothing, no activities, and I'm the one like championing the family in the right direction. And he told me, he's like, you are you have to be the one that's gonna plan the family things. Like, I'm not gonna be the one to plan it, which I understand. So I'm putting effort into that. We're going on our first trip. We're going skiing and we're bringing a nanny with us. And I think it's gonna be fabulous. I really think it's gonna be fabulous because there's gonna be some hours where we are gonna wanna hit the slopes. We're gonna wanna do our own thing and you cannot do both. Like. Hey, hey, hey. That was another thing that I've really, you realize once you have a kid, you're like, yeah, this is a full-time thing. I cannot be in two places at once. So we're going on our first ski trip in May. We're bringing a nanny. I hope it all works out. I just hope that the trip goes seamlessly. I'm the type of personality where I like intimate, private, things so if there's usually like another person thrown into the mix i'll feel uncomfortable so let's see how that goes and other travel that i have coming up i have two best friend weddings back to back this summer and 
I cannot miss them for the world, so I'm going 100%. I'm not gonna go to them without my baby. That's literally not an option. And yeah, both of those are out of the country and both of those are no kids. Like it's not like I would go to the wedding and bring him. So I'm gonna need to find a nanny for that too. But I'm excited to start getting back into the traveling of it all. I mean, right now it's like there's no incentive for us to travel anywhere to go anywhere because we're, we have it down here. We have our routine down packed here. We have his crib, we have his changing table, we have everything. And we have not put ourselves out of our comfort zone in terms of going anywhere because he's so young. But I know that some people are hot. I know that some people are putting their three months olds, their four months olds, their five months olds on planes and they're out there and I've seen Girls that I follow on Instagram going to Hawaii with their babies going everywhere. And I'm like, okay, I think I can handle it. And I deserve to at least give it a shot. Hey, I'm putting some hydrating balm in my hair. Isn't that so cool? I don't even know if this is a mask. I got sent so many hair products recently. Maybe it's because I keep talking about how I'm bulging. Maybe all these hair brands are like, oh, sister. Let us, let us help you out a little bit. IGK sent me a ton of stuff. This is a hydrating hair balm. Ooh, I used this two days ago. I used it to get the crimps that I did earlier and I did feel like it made a difference because my crimps are usually crunchy to the touch from all the hairspray I put on them. Hey. Hey, are you so sweepy? It's not that time. It's not that time yet. It's not that time yet. Putting a hair mask in. I'm doing what I can. I really need a trim. I'm doing these two in my hairline. My hairline really is actually coming back. Slowly but surely. It's such an awkward process. I'm going to both Colombia and France, like Paris. And that's a lot of travel coming up. I know it's like so far away, but that's another thing. Obviously travel, you think about it so differently. When you're a mom, it's so funny. Like I used to think planning trips far in advance was like weird. And then you realize that you grow up and that's what every responsible family does because you have to. But yeah, those two trips should be, should be exciting. Like best friend weddings really end up being so much fun. And for our wedding, I had to be Mrs. Silver Sally Prego. And during my wedding, I'm like, I just can't wait till your weddings because I'm going to live it up. And now it is, it's my time. Okay. Okay. I wonder at what age she's going to start remembering things because imagine I'm not even remembering those trips. Like for these weddings, we're going to go to Paris. Like, I hope he remembers Paris. the baby down. It took a little bit longer than usual today and that is where teamwork really makes the dream work. Shout out Henny. Usually he's the one to get the final like really getting like the last second of getting the baby in the crib like usually he gets that dub but today I got it. He fell asleep in my arms with all the skincare I've done in my life. I seriously never know if the eye patch goes like that or the other way around. I think it's like that. Oh boy, I just saw him waking up on the monitor a little bit. Let's see. And Brooke had a little purse that I got to hand so We have a like, piece of Trisha here. It's like I died, but I almost look kind of iconic. Oh! <laughs> I'm sitting with Anna.